Hey y'all, a quick preface here. This is a Pecha Kucha that we put together to talk about our internet feedback loops. So if you don't know what Pecha Kucha is, 20 slides at 20 seconds each. So it's sort of a fast paced lightning talk. I think I have 18 slides here and a couple of them go 40 seconds, but here we go. Hi, my name is Simon Hutchinson, and I'm gonna to talk today about a collaborative project I've been pursuing with Will Klingenmeyer, a sound artist based in Denver. This project, Zoomscapes, leverages the expressive potential of imperfections of conferencing software like Zoom through the creation of internet-based feedback loops. First, let's talk about latency, which likely many of you experience in your online conversations. While our conversations are impressively instantaneous, there is a delay. I mean, it's going up into space. Now, as you can imagine, there are a lot of factors that can affect this latency, but it's usually up to around 150 milliseconds which is pretty great. A fraction of a second delay is likely negligible for most conversations. However, in musical performance, 150 milliseconds is a lifetime. If this pianist is trying to synchronize with this violinist, she hears the sound 150 milliseconds late. That's less than a second, but that means our violinist hears the piano not 150 milliseconds late, but 300 milliseconds, since that signal is delayed to them as well. So the violist then slows down to get back on beat, so the piano slows down, etc. Now, the good news is that many very clever people have been working on solutions to this problem. This is an image from Jack Trip, developed by Chris Chafe at Stanford. I haven't tried this, but apparently the latency of this is less than 25 milliseconds. I won't get into the software here any more than this, because it's not really my interest. Our approach was different. Instead of fighting a battle against this latency, what if we use it expressively as part of the space, like a reverb or resonant frequencies of a room? I've heard secondhand that composer Atao Tanaga has spoken of this, embracing the space of this new medium, this new venue, and creating new music that can thrive in this environment. Setting aside this metaphor of space for the moment, we already use latency expressively. Here's an example of a tape delay, where the sound is recorded to tape and then played back slightly later. This is a ubiquitous effect in many genres of recorded music, using the delayed sound for artistic effect. Okay, let's take this a step further and talk about feedback. Feedback is when we take the output of a process, then run it back into the input. In audio, this is usually the audio signal itself. We change the signal in some way, then run it back into the beginning of the process to go through the change again. Let's have a look at a few examples of audio feedback. First, here now is our tape delay with feedback. Now the sound comes in, goes through the same processes of delay, but now the delayed output signal is fed back into the input. So the delayed sound is delayed again, then again, then again, like an echo fading away. You might have experienced another kind of feedback that occurs when you put a microphone in front of a speaker. In this case, the microphone picks up the sound, amplifies it, sends it to the speaker, which goes back to the microphone, and the loop continues. This piece, Pendulum Music by Steve Reich, leverages that idea into a process piece of overlapping moments of feedback as the microphones swing by the speakers. Okay, what if we cut the microphone out entirely and just run a mixer into itself? Here, I'm sending the outputs of my mixer back into the inputs, so the sound is being amplified and different frequencies are being emphasized based on the electronic resonance of my mixer and its settings. Some composers at the Institute of Sonology in the Netherlands explored these ideas in a more controlled way, designing cybernetic music systems. In this case, cybernetic means self-regulating. The goal here was creating feedback loops that generated dynamic and interesting sounds that didn't dissolve into static noise or static silence. So in Will and My Work, we feed Zoom back into itself. We're gonna do some processes to the audio on either side, but Zoom is going to be the delay unit for us, delaying the signal between our two ends of the call. We should acknowledge that Zoom, like the tape, is going to affect our audio. It's going to compress it dynamically and do data compression on the signal, introducing other artifacts that will become part of our loop. Like our no input mixer, we're not generating any audio ourselves. We're both just applying audio effects on either end. So I'm ring modulating the sound that comes to me from Will, and Will is filtering and saturating the sound he received from me. For emphasis, neither of us are creating a signal. We're just affecting the signal and feeding it back. So what we hear is the resonant properties of this system emphasized through the feedback.
Why do this? First and most importantly, we like this exploration of sound. It's a novel idea to explore the expressive possibilities of this contemporarily significant software. Beyond that, though, there's a lot to unpack. We can explore feedback loops as metaphor. Some social economic issues are examples of feedback loops that have run into stasis. Perhaps these processes need to be revisited for more dynamic interest. Now, the previous example is quite literally the simplest thing we've done, and we're experimenting with a variety of different processes on either end. We've played with stereo ideas, comparators, etc. Always trying to figure out how the sound can be dynamically engaging. I'm going to play another example here, this with just one additional process. Before I return the signal to Will, I put it through a spring reverb before sending it back. So what? Here are a few things that I continue to take away from these experiments. Feedback is exciting. You never quite know what it's going to do. You can plan, but ultimately it's impossible to completely predict what will happen within the infinity of the loop. And don't let technology push you around. Technology is an extension of human ingenuity. I, I wouldn't know how to get started programming a conferencing software, but I'm absolutely going to explore all of the affordances that this system offers. Thanks for listening.